Welcome to the second episode in a Legendarium series about ancient Iberia. In part two, Coming of the Celts, we will talk about the migration which transformed life in the Iberian Peninsula for centuries. The Iberian Peninsula had always been a unique part of the ancient world. Cut off from the rest of Europe by the Pyrenees Mountains, it has both a Mediterranean and Atlantic coast. Additionally, it lies close to Africa. Thus, it has consistently been a nexus of trade and cultural exchange between these worlds. But the next era began with migration, namely the entrance of the Urnfield cultures into the Iberian Peninsula. The El Argar culture diminished and slowly disappeared during the Bronze Age collapse, a time when the great empires of the age suddenly fell, including Egypt, Assyria, and the Hittites. This collapse meant an end to the vast trade networks, entire professions, and even kingdoms. Yet this time of great upheaval would later open the door to new nations, including the proto-Celtic Urnfield culture and the Phoenicians, who originally came from modern-day Lebanon and Syria. Around the year 1104 BC, the Phoenicians sailed from the city of Tyre on the Mediterranean coast. Upon arriving in Iberia, the Tyrians founded a walled settlement on the coast of the very southern tip of the peninsula and called it Gadir. It still stands today as the Spanish city of Cadiz, the oldest city in Western Europe still standing. This small Phoenician settlement became the biggest turning point in Iberia's history. They introduced the use of iron, writing systems centered on the alphabet, and the potter's wheel. These influences spread across the peninsula. Since the Phoenicians came to extend their trade network, they took a heavy toll on the peninsula's forests. Lumbering settlements became a common sight throughout the peninsula, and lumbermen used the rivers to move into the Iberian interior and seek out pristine forests which they swiftly cut down. Most of Iberia's indigenous evergreen oak became Phoenician ships. After clearing these forests, both newcomers and native Iberians began grazing sheep and cattle upon the denuded land. Yet the Phoenician presence also led to the expansion of agriculture, in part because the newcomers introduced olive trees and grapes, which became the basis of highly productive and profitable vineyards, which both Phoenicians and Iberians ran. Phoenician pottery, jars, and plates also freely circulated around the many nations of the peninsula. Yet even as the Phoenicians began to transform Iberia, another culture emerged in the Alps which would profoundly change Iberia. In the modern city of Hallstatt, located in modern-day Austria, a proto-Celtic culture became wealthy from iron and salt mines in the region. Most likely they belonged to the Urnfield culture, since they too buried their dead in giant earthen urns which they buried beneath the ground. Men who worked the Hallstatt mines developed immense shoulder muscles from hauling huge plates of salt. The rock salt also emitted a crystalline sheen in the tunnels, so the miners followed shining paths through the mountains, chipping away with their axes. They mined on a massive scale, excavating tunnels 600 feet wide and 60 feet the Celtic miners lit their way with flaming candles. The miners also urinated and defecated in the Hallstatt tunnels, ensuring their leavings would be preserved by the salt. The lords, who became rich off the miners' toil, wore gold bracelets, drank from vessels made of sheep bronze, and carried around iron daggers and axes to show off their wealth. 
The iron smelting technology and techniques also saw the Hallstatt culture take a great leap forward in terms of metallurgy. Smiths made better tools, sturdier farm equipment, metal-rimmed wheels, and sharper weapons from iron. The abundance of local iron also meant that it could be traded as raw material, and Iron Age traders typically did so in the form of ingots shaped like a double pyramid or simple rods that could weigh up to 20 pounds each. As these proto celts migrated out of their Austrian homeland, they brought their ways with them. Beginning around the year 800 BC, the Hallstatt Celts began migrating into Iberia, founding tribes like the Celtici, Gallici, Lusitani, or Celt Iberiae. Wherever they traveled, the Celt Iberians built opidums, or Celtic hill forts, which became centers of wealth and power, much like the hilltop settlements of the earlier El Argar culture. Yet the Celt Iberian element never became completely dominant. Instead, they immersed themselves with the local peoples, slowly creating a unique cultural blend of Celtic and Iberian. Indeed, the common roots of the Celts are shown shown in DNA tests done in both the Basque country of Spain and Ireland, which shows that the Celtic peoples of those regions shared common ancestors. One example of a union between Celt and Iberian is the falcata, a formidable weapon iconic to pre-Roman Iberia, which combines a Celtic sickle blade and the indigenous weapon style. One of the most famous artifacts from this time is a limestone statue of a bull found in Osuna, now called Seville. It dates from the late 5th century BC. Scholars believe it to be a funerary monument, since the Celt Iberians believed that bulls served as protectors of tombs and symbols of masculinity. Priests may have even carried out sacrifices before them. These Celt Iberians dominated a vast swath of land in the north of the peninsula, yet they would soon have to contend with a fresh wave of newcomers, which would transform Iberia yet again. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.